Terry Easter wants to know, uh, when you exploded the cement truck, was that the most powerful explosion you've ever felt? Um, tell us what it was like in comparison to smaller explosions. Okay, so the cement truck, we blew up two cement trucks, one in the very first season, Second season? Second season. One in the second season and one in the last season. And in the first season, we were up in gold country um, at a quarry up there in Angel's Camp. And we were about a mile away from the detonation across water. The second time we detonated a cement truck, we were underground in New Mexico Tech. <clears throat> and so, the fact that I felt the blast wave of that first uh, cement truck explosion up in Angel's Camp, yeah, that was without a doubt the most powerful explosion I ever felt. It's the most uh, explosives we ever put into a detonation. Uh, I have been closer to blast waves of other materials, but there was something about, we had line of sight to the cement truck, so we just saw this puff of smoke and then like four or five seconds later, yeah, seven seconds later, whatever the speed of sound is over a mile and a quarter, give or take, um, we see this wave come across the water at us. Um, the horrifying footage of the explosion of ampho of fertilizer in Beirut gives you an idea about how fast blast waves travel and it's super terrifying. And it hit like a, it was fascinating. It like was a physical force that pushed us back. Really, really spectacular. Um, and this is, we used to tell this story all the time and I haven't told it in years. Um, <clears throat> there was a problem with that camera shot. Like the cameraman was like flummoxed by the blast wave and the shot jiggled. And so the shot that you see in the opening credits where you see Jamie do that jump from the blast of the cement truck, Jamie faked that. It's, he, 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 he faked it. That's Jamie's acting, which is excellent. Um, <clears throat> but this is the other thing about explosives is they, they're much faster than you think they are. That is, the crack of an explosion, even from AMFO, which is a relatively slower explosive compared to C4, and slower is a very relative term here. Um, the crack happens so fast, you almost don't even have an experience of hearing it. It's more like an after effect. Um, and so for my money, while the cement truck is the most powerful, my favorite is water heaters because water heaters are this like big, slow thud. Relatively, they happen over this long time period. Um, I, I mean, and to give you some context, I would imagine that like a C4 explosion crack lasts like three or four milliseconds, whereas the water heater is like plausibly like a hundred milliseconds, like boom, it is this, oh, uh, it's, it satisfies what the wily e. Coyote and every one of our hearts thinks an explosion should feel like. That's what a water heater feels like. Oh, um, this is really cool. Ryan Peck asks a terrific question about our production structure. I was talking about uh, the structure of our, how we broke down stories. Um, Ryan wants to know, with the show being run by folks in Australia and an executive producer in England, do you feel like you had more autonomy than perhaps other shows on air? We did have more autonomy than other shows on air, but it wasn't because the production companies in Sydney and Dan Tapster, our co-executive producer, was in Manchester, England. Um, it was because we ran a really good show. We ran a tight ship, um, and that ship made money, and when your ship makes money, people don't mess with you. It's, it's really that simple. Um, it isn't until the later seasons, like, season 11, 12, 13, when the ratings start going down, did, did Discovery start messing with the narratives at all? Um, but so, to give you some context, uh, Ryan's correct. The show was produced out of Sydney, Australia by Beyond Productions. They made this show for decades called Beyond 2000. And once 2000 hit, it became called 
Beyond Tomorrow. Um, and that show was so successful, they formed a company called Beyond Productions. Uh, and Beyond is the folks who came up with the idea for Mythbusters, came out and shot the pilots in 02. And we had a few different um, executive producers, but uh, the longest running one was Dan Tapster. Uh, and Dan, I love working with Dan. One of my most rich and rewarding uh, collaborative experiences, breaking stories and making that show with Dan. Uh, and yeah, he was in Manchester, England. So we had production in San Francisco, producer in England, production company in Australia. What it meant was that Dan could talk to us in one part of his day and talk to them in another part of his day and was actually able to kind of, we were able to sort of maintain a kind of 24 seven coverage of the important things that we needed for production because of that split. Um, so it worked really well. It wasn't like, it wasn't like anybody, yeah, the question about autonomy is an interesting one. It really is true. As long as you're making the parent company a bunch of dough, they are very likely just going to let you do what you do. Oh, there's a caveat. There's a caveat to that, <laughs> which is uh, my friend who directs commercials says, if you're doing a campaign for a company and one of the commercials you make gets a bunch of awards, the next time you make a commercial for that company, a whole bunch of extra people are gonna want input. That's a different thing. We never had to deal with that. Um, yeah, we were like, Beyond Productions is a seasoned, was a, I don't, I haven't talked to the folks at Beyond in a while. I know that they were bought by another company uh, and I don't know what their current roster is. So I'm gonna speak to Beyond as I worked with them back in the day. Um, a really, Beyond was a seasoned production company with a bunch of amazing producers, camera people, production people at their disposal. They had worked with people and sent them all over the world, which is a, an intense crucible for making television. Um, and consequently, they, they put together a series of phenomenal crews for us to make the show with. I've long talked about my first two cameramen, uh, uh, Paul Henry and Peter Coleman. Uh, and then later on, you know, uh, Benny and uh, uh, Peter Heap and Scott Sorensen. But those first two, Paul Henry and Peter Coleman, uh, they were regulars at Beyond Productions. And uh, so Beyond was a pleasure to work with as a production company. And yeah, Dan was amazing. All right, I think I've answered that. I, did, I feel like I, I missed a sort of slight bit of narrative throughput to that, but I feel like I got to the basics of it. Uh, all right, that's yeah, I answered that. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I wanted to briefly mention that you could become a tested member. I know, everybody is competing for you to become a member of their thing. What I want to express to you is that the Tested membership has become such an important part of the Tested family. We get tremendous feedback from the Tested members and they expand the stories that we can tell and the things that we have access to. And you can become a part of it right now by clicking on the link below. See you in the chat.